Welcome to Tech-Centric. Let's go. Those crazy Koreans, they're so good at tennis. What do they come up with though? How do they do this stuff? Like who who they, who does I'll this? Yes. The Koreans are awesome because the Japanese or whoever makes this thing, I don't get this. How are they good at tennis? They can eat hot dogs. You see that crazy kid with the hot dogs? He like stuffs like six of them in his mouth. He have like yellow hair. Yellow, yeah, he's crazy like bleach yellow hair. He's like Dragon Ball Z guy. Yeah. You're not even listening, are you? Oh, we're recording, huh? Sweet! Dude, let's do the oh, show. Oh, hey, alright. Welcome just, to, uh... Yeah. Is, what do you do? Let me take off my Wii replacement spray. Oh, that's right. We don't want to put it all through the TV. <laughs> anyway, welcome to episode 6 of Tech Centric. If you are joining us for the first time, perhaps you found us on YouTube, perhaps you found us on Stage 6, perhaps you found us on Undo.TV, wherever you're finding us. UR.TV, Infonomicon. Yoshi's for us, etc. Where are you going to be? We are a uh, all-around video podcast. Well, not really a podcast, but a video cast for uh, pretty much anybody that likes technology or likes hacking or uh, games, anything, right? Yeah, anything we like, they should like. We should like, you know. And yeah, we are back after our uh, about two-month hiatus. Uh, we said we wouldn't do that again, but we kind of did. There's lots of reasons for that. Steve snacked his leg in half. Uh, it was the holidays. Mm, Jared's still stuff. trying to yeah. settle in. Jared just moved back from South Carolina moved again. Back. Back. You remember how he moved up. Anyways, <laughs> um, let's jump right into our first segment. Mm -hmm. You did some uh, DS hacking while you were like laying on the couch lifeless on Vicodin and morphine, right? M morphine, at least, more or less. <laughs> at least you did some yes. something useful with your uh, time dying. Pretty, mu pretty much. Um, it's basically just very simple and straightforward guide. Basic. To yeah, extremely basic, and trying to do the cheapest way to get homebrew apps and games onto your DS. Do a little bit of like experimentation, maybe a little bit of coding if you're up there. You know. See, I think this is important scene. because a lot of people do, you know, the PSP hacking stuff. Yeah. PSP hacking is a big deal because you know PSP's got built-in Wi-Fi, all right. the stuff. But, Same with the S. But does, yeah, I know. I was just gonna get to it. But okay. does the <laughs> does the PSP have you know a dual screen and a touch screen and all this fancy stuff? Well, touch screen's kind of fun. Or solid state memory for that matter? Mm. No. Okay. So let's go straight into it. This is uh, DS hacking uh, 101, if you will, with uh, Steve. everyone and uh, some of you may have received a Nintendo DS whether you wanted it or not and um, you may just want to play games with it you may want to do a little bit more if you're a geek kind of like us um, so today I'm going to show you a quick guide on how to get homebrew games and apps onto your DS now the essentials of how it works the DS actually loads first off of the slot one which is the DS slot um, and then it goes to the slot 2. So that's the Game Boy Advance slot. Um, the easiest way is to do this, there's two simple ways. First one starts with a Pass Me device, which is basically a DS cartridge. Um, this isn't one exactly, but this is what it looks like. It's like a DS cartridge, and basically what it does, you put it into your DS, and it allows the DS to load files off of your Game Boy Advance slot in the bottom. Um, this is very popular with most people. Uh, what you can do though is with the Game Boy cart that goes in the bottom, this isn't one, this is a game, uh, DS plug that goes in the bottom here for the Game Boy slot. Basically what it does is it has a, it's like a card reader for, the, for your DS basically. Um, you put flash memory into it, reads it on your DS, you have files on there. Um, 
some popular cards that go into it are compact flash like uh, SD, mini SD, micro SD and um, it's a cheap fairly cheap way to do it but there are cheaper ways um, some popular companies that make these are Supercard, M3 um, and Game Boy Movie Player is also popular um, those run about forty to fifty dollars and also the pass me device runs about twenty with shipping um, so it's not the most cheap way to do it but it is very compatible with a lot of the homebrew applications and games so I would recommend it if you're into that but what I have is what's called a slot one solution and what this is is I have the R4 Revolution for DS in particular and um, it's card reader, pass me device, both of those in one. And uh, it makes it this just so much more simple. It has the micro SD slot at the top. And I got my one gig card in there. So it's extremely simple. This is the most basic way to do this. And homebrew is actually a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of programs that you can get for homebrew. Um, lots to do with the Wi-Fi that's on the DS. You can do um, internet browsers, AIM clients, you got MSN clients, you got IRC, VNC even, um, email, so many things to do with it. I recommend it, it's really fun. Another thing that comes up when you talk about homebrew and playing things off your DS is can you play illegal games? Now, with some of them it is possible. I'm not going to go into that because we definitely do not condone playing illegal games on any system. It's just not right. Um, here at TechCentric, we shun that, and it's it's not a good thing to do. Um, you should buy anything that you want to play, except for things that are free and open source. So, going into that more, there is so many programs that you can get. Uh, there's lots of apps and games at uh, NS. Uh, ndshb.net, that's Nintendo Homebrew, basically homepage. Um, there's more information, there's a DS wiki on Homebrew, and I would check that out, you can just Google it. Um, for more information though, check out our show notes, uh, should be next to, the, next to the download link. And uh, any questions, comments, concerns, you can email me at steve at techcentric.org. Uh, or check out our PBX hotline, that's at 1-866-667-1337. Um, so I'm signing out for now. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Look at these noobs. Boom. The pin noobs. Yes. Huh? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, strike. strike. They are all out of Sweet. here. This. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, we're back. back. The show. We're back. Okay. Pause Sorry that. about that. Pause it. All right. Okay. Pause it. Anyway. Okay. DS hacking. Yes. Fantastic. Well, thank you. One question. Yes. Okay. I go on eBay. Mm -hmm. I buy uh, Final Fantasy... 173,000, okay? okay? Whatever number they're up to. It's in Japanese slash Korean slash Portuguese, okay? Portuguese, no, okay? No English version. It's in import. Spain, okay. I'm not very familiar with the import restrictions on the system itself. Mm -hmm. Will this method allow you to legally purchase that game, back it up to your uh, disc there, and play the import as if it were a normal game? Okay, so... You're saying you buy the game, yeah. and you legally own this. If you do, then hey, this is this is fine. Um, it's the methods that I talked about will work with import games. Okay. Now, like I said, you must own the copy of the game. I mean, just that's just the legit Fair way to use. do it. It's, Fair use, yes. Yeah. Um, and the way, like I said, the ways I talked about will allow you to play import games. Now, whether you can actually read Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, <laughs> is matter. up to you. Yes. Um, but yeah, it should work fine, um, and I would recommend going ahead and try it if you already have the games. Sweet. All right. All right. Uh, I guess the next segment we got Jared's. Uh, he did that thing with the put the text in the the image. Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus Rex. Sweet. Yes. Let's do it. Let's watch it. Hi guys, welcome to another security-filled segment of mine.
going along with my other government-induced paranoia segments, I'm going to be teaching you today how to hide stuff in images. Now, what you're probably wondering is, well, Jared, why would I want to do this? Well, maybe you have a nosy brother or sister, spouse, co-worker, or boss, and you just want to hide something from them, whether it be a 9-11 conspiracy document or just a private letter that you've, lost, that you've written to an old flame. Whatever. I don't really care. If you want to hide it, that's your business, not mine. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this. But first, before we do this, you need two things. You need a PC running in Windows NT or better. And by better, I don't mean Linux. Sorry for you Linux guys out there, but we can only use this method for particularly for a Windows machine. After you've had Windows NT, also, you need to download the latest copy of WinRAR. You can find the latest version at this link below. Now, once you've installed WinRAR, create a new folder under your C drive. I'll label mine as tech-centric, but you're free to name it anything that you want. After this, put the document or any type of file that you'd like to hide into the folder you, that you just made. My text file will be named test. Also be sure to include any JPEG image that you would like to use as the host of your hidden document or file. This is going to be the image that carries your file. Once this is done, right-click the document that you wish to hide. Select add to, insert your document name, .rar. An icon of a RINRAR archive will show up inside the folder with the same name as your document. Next, open up Command Prompt. Then type cd dot dot and hit enter. Repeat the process again. This is allowing you to change the directory for all of those who didn't know. When you've reached c colon backslash greater than sign, Type in cd, insert your, insert your folder name here, and hit enter. After this, type copy slash b your document dot txt plus your document dot txt dot rar space your picture dot jpeg. This also works for hiding any number of things in an image, i.e. mp3s, wmas, mp4s, etc. All you have to do is hide it like this using the formula accordingly. A new jpeg pops up containing both the picture and the hidden document. If you want to view the hidden file though, simply open up in WinRAR, right clicking it and selecting View File. Now, there, this is a good way to hide stuff, but there are some basic flaws in this. One, there is no password protection on this. Two, when you look at the properties of the image that's, uh, that's acting as the host, people will be able to see a difference between the one that's original, the original image that's hiding it, which may be 130K whereas another one would have a gig in it. I mean, the basic person, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, won't notice that. But if you have a lead hack store, they might just be onto something and they might just figure you out. There are many, many ways of hiding stuff. They're all out there on the internet, but I hope this one provides uh, some information for you. It's pretty fast, it's easy, it doesn't require that much. Uh, I hope you find this educational and simple, and I hope you stay safe. Oh yeah, yeah, beat him up, well, come on, come on, come on, get him. He's got sunglasses on, he's boxing, that doesn't make any sunglasses. sense. Come on, get him, get him. Come on. Jab, jab, come on. Left, punch, come on. Oh, oh, time's running out, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Punch him, punch him, punch him, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Use the controls. That, that's enough. That, that's this is pathetic. I'm sick of this. This is pathetic. I can't get this stupid Wii thing. Anyway, all right. <sighs> we are back, and Jared has just finished steganography. His steganography, and yeah, segment was a little hard to follow. Yeah. We will have very uh, good show notes on the site because uh, <laughs> it, it's it's a cool thing once you get it working, but didn't really demonstrate it in the segment. That's okay. Once it gets working, it's kind of neat because it's not something you see every day. But, uh, yeah, so I, uh, I can log into my computer with my credit card. No way. Sweet. Out of sight. Where are we, like, 1972? I don't know. Out of sight? Who that's, says that? That's out of sight, man. Okay. I, got, I guess it will be in sight because they're going to watch it now. Mmm. Let's watch it. That's cool. Let's go. <laughs> We've all seen in the movies like a classified FBI area or something where the you know, the FBI agent walks up and he swipes his magnetic card or he you know he puts his thumb on it or whatever. 
we've always thought that's really cool. If you ever wanted to have that on your computer? It's really easy to do if you are willing to spend a little bit more to buy the pre-made hardware. Okay. Now what we're gonna have here, we have this. It's called a. Uh, this is a Magtech uh, three-track uh, mag strike reader. Now this may look familiar because what this reader does, which I'll get into a little bit more in a minute, but this reader actually takes the stripe off of cards such as this. Every any possible card you have has it. Your library card, you know. This is actually a this is a movie card. You know, you can get these things anywhere. And these things all actually have these these bars are actually all encoded with a number and with data and all kinds of stuff, which is really cool. They're really fun to play around with on their own. Yeah, all right. So we got that out. Of it. Um the type of thing, the type of reader we're using here, like I said before, it's manufactured by Magtech. I think they're a company somewhere in California. They're kind of hard to get. Uh, you can get them on eBay, though. They run anywhere between forty to eighty dollars for the nicer models. This is one of the nicer models because it is the three-track, uh, which reads pretty much any kind of card out there. A lot of credit cards have all three tracks. You can kind of tell by the width of the track physically what it looks like and how. Uh, what will actually be encoded on that track. Uh, the smaller cards such as this where they don't hold much data don't have much on them at all. Anyway, more about how this works. You swipe the card, it actually has a PS2 encoder built in which if you look here you can kind of see where my keyboard connects straight into this. Now this is acting kind of as a PS2 keyboard uh, and my, my keyboard itself is actually passing right through this so if I type something, it still works, right? I can still go in and I can, I can still type normally because it, this this uh, MagStripe reader is allowing it to pass through straight to the to the motherboard of the PC. Now, where this other long lead is going, this big, thick black cable, this is carrying both the data from the keyboard itself, which is passing through, and it's also acting as another keyboard uh, because when you swipe a card, pretty much all that's on there is, is ASCII data, and you're just going to see that ASCII data anyway. So let's go ahead and explore a couple of cards here and I'll get more into some of the cool things you can do with this. Okay, so we've got a, a number of cards here to experiment with. We've got it's my PayPal debit card, MasterCard thing, uh, Real Crown Club card, which is kind of just a lame card or whatever. Uh, we have a Visa debit card and I have my ATM card. They all have mag stripes on them. The three here all have the same two track mag stripes, but what I want to try to call your attention to is the difference in tracks between a two and three track card. You can see the track on my right is a lot wider and that's what you're going to want to look for in a card reader is if you want to be able to use cards with a lot more data on them you want to be able to scan all three tracks. Uh, yeah, A lot of cards are just two tracks but a couple once in a while they run across a three track card not very common because most cards don't need that much space. Maybe like a security card where it's got to you know, store encryption and all that kind of stuff but I'm not sure why PayPal decided to go with this one. Maybe all MasterCards are like that, I don't know. Alright, so basically to test, to just kind of see what's on these cards, we're just going to have to open up Notepad. And I've got Notepad open here, so we're going to go ahead and try to swipe a couple of these. The first one we're going to swipe is going to be this Regal card. So we're going to swipe, and what it does is, like I said before, it encodes it to ASCII and sends it to the machine. And then it hits Enter afterwards, which is going to make this a breeze to set up to do any kind of passwords. Uh, so as you can see here, I believe, I don't really know much about how they are actually encoded, but I have noticed that they always start with a percent sign and they always end with a question mark. I'm not sure if that's something put in by the card reader itself since this is the only one I've experimented with, but uh, that is one pattern that I've seen. Um, and I'm not sure when the card reader knows to hit enter or not, but I've never seen it hit enter too soon, so I know it's not a timed thing. Okay, let's go into something a little bit more detailed here. Let's try my ATM card. Let's oh, swipe at the bar towards the light, people. Okay, on this card you can see we got a lot more space, but again, it does start with the percent sign and end with the question mark. Uh, in the middle you can also see my name. We see some account numbers, all kinds of stuff here. Uh, really of no use to us right now. If I was a bank, this would be, you know, this is perfect. This is really ideal for what the what the card is built for. Uh, yeah, I mean, so uh, going into more of a black hat approach, if you were to find somebody's card and you didn't want to uh, 
I don't know, say the numbers were rubbed off on the front or something. Say you wanted to use their card online or something. You could get one of these card readers and you could just pull the pull the data right off. I mean, it is encoded for a computer to read. I mean, it's got semicolons, we got equal signs, all kinds of different encoded stuff here. Because remember, it is data, and it can, it's more over. It needs to be read by a digital device, so it's it's encoded for that purpose. Now let's take a look at the uh, three or four track card. This one should hold a lot more data on it because it has a lot more stuff. Which I was wrong, but yeah, basically. Um, basically looks just like the ATM card. Uh, it's got some account numbers, some authorization stuff, got my name again. Not all too interesting. Now let's go for the last one. Let's try the regular debit card here. This one looks just like the ATM card. It's probably because it's issued by the same bank. So looking back and recapping on this, we can see that uh, some of the smaller cards, the no-name cards, such as the, the movie theater card, uh, has a lot less data than some of the bigger cards that need more data. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's makes sense. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and see, let's experiment with some of the cool things we can do with this now, because we know that it's going to send a PS2 encoded message uh, of numbers and symbols, which is easily read by a computer or even by a human, but uh, one of the cool things that you can do with a device such as this, or even more devices but with a device, especially like this one, where you don't have to code any software, is you can actually set your Windows password to that string that comes from this mag card. Which, if you're using your head, means that you can log in with this card. Uh, some people may think that's dumb. I personally don't really use it because I can type a password faster. But if you, it's probably more secure because, I mean, look at this. We've got a mile-long string of text. Nobody's going to be able to crack that any time this century. Uh, yeah, but if you, uh, on the other hand, if you lose the card, you're kind of screwed because, yeah. You can always crack the password, but we just talked about that. So let's go ahead and walk through that. Basically, you're just going to, I'm using Vista. Uh, I don't know why, really. It really makes no sense. It's blue screen on me about, like, 12 times since I loaded it in the last, I don't know, four or five days. So... I don't load Vista yet. That's just a side note. Wait until Service Pack 1. This is not pretty. Okay. Uh, basically, the same way you do it on XP. You're just going to go into your user account thing and change your password. Type in your old password. Swipe the card for the new password. Swipe the card again for the new password. Hit change password, and you're done. Okay. So we're going to lock the machine now, right? We're going away. We're going to, uh, we're going to KFC. We went to KFC, we got some chicken, we came back, I wanted to log into my computer now. What do I do? Okay, just go in my wallet, I pull out my uh, my Regal Crown Club card, which is something I probably had with me anyway, and I give focus to the text box, which if you have one username, it already has focus, which is good, so you don't have to use the mouse or anything at all. So basically, I mean, you could have this, this is cool, you could have this mounted somewhere, right? Just kind of walk in, swipe the card, I'm logged in. Action replay. Machine is locked. Swipe the card. No input from the user. I'm logged in. Alright, so in conclusion, mag strips or mag stripes, whatever you want to call them, are uh, they're cool to play with. You know, you can just swipe it, swipe the card, swipe the cards all day. Oh, that's peeping. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, if you're looking for more information, infonomicon.org, go to their video section. Uh, whatever video, I think it's episode 8, they did a good presentation in a hotel room about going way in depth of how these cards are coded. Um, I probably should have reviewed it before I made this segment, but that's kind of what gave me the idea a little bit. But I just kind of stumbled across this thing and I decided to play around with it. Uh, if you're interested in looking into this, feel free to drop me an email. It's will at techcentric.org. I'll give you some more information on where to get this stuff. Uh, I'll leave a message on the hotline, 866-667-1327. Um, yeah, that's about it. Feel free to uh, definitely show me some of the cool projects that you've done because there's a lot of cool things that people do out there with these things. Hey. What are you doing? 
I wish I had a lightsaber on this thing. You can't. It's a Wii remote. It's not a lightsaber. But, but it could be. I admit it to be cool. It's not. So let's just get back to the show. Yeah. Hey, that card thing was cool. I liked it. Yeah, it is cool. Huh? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to buy one. Nobody's got that. Yeah, I guess you're right. Nobody's got that. It's not something everybody I got. will eventually. Who can do that? This is a card. card. Is it? Right? It just, it's, it's pretty cool. Just, I mean... I'm jealous. I'm gonna have to get that. Steve is jealous of me. Wow. Well, first time speaking ever. Of, uh, jealousy. Here comes a uh, segment that needs no explanation. Sir from Steve. everyone and welcome to another segment of Surfing with Steve. I'm your host A. Steve. Um, today I have another two sites for you. First one is VoipCheap.com. That's V-O-I-P-C-H-E-A-P.com. And uh, what this is, is it's basically just like Skype, but better because you can call landlines and cell phones for free. And I don't think they're going to be changing that anytime soon, just like Skype did. Um, but this is good and um, Recommend it to your friends because then you can talk to them on the internet for free, and that's good. Free calls are cool. So, definitely check that out. Um, then I have another one, and this is mostly for PSP users because they need to get on AIM. And this is called AIM on PSP 2.0. And basically you go to the website, aimonpsp.com, and you can log on using your PSP. It's formatted for the resolution and everything. Very easy to use. It's pretty cool. Um, if you need to talk to your friends on the go, Wi-Fi, definitely check it out. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, I'm Steve at techcentric.org. Give me a call. Give me an email. Give me anything. That'd be cool. All right. See you later. Your striped pants on. This is actually you. Oh, it's my oh look at that. That's what I mean. That is going to be out of the park. Wait, 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 wait. No. Oh, it's an out. <laughs> Four. Four. Well, that was you. Ah, uh, you're playing it. Time out. Well, anyway, we're back, and uh... fantastic, sir. Oh, Steve. yes, of course. I forgot. Fan diddlyastic. Did you even watch it? No. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna cry. I've seen so many surf on Steve's. They all just They're blend all, together, right? They all just blend together. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Anyway, and if. Huh. As if you needed another thing to make your day any worse after you've watched this pathetic excuse of an episode. <laughs> Here's Tavik, or Nick, I guess you know him by. <laughs> and he's going to show you uh, some pretty sad things to do on Valentine's Day because he doesn't have a date. Poor Tavik. Poor Tavik. Should hire him a... Uh... People like our good buddy Nick here don't always have an easy time finding a date for Valentine's Day. But don't fret, because there's plenty of other things to do on Valentine's Day besides going out. Nick, do you have a date for Valentine's Day? Yes, you. Well, that's okay. Here are five awesome things you can do on Valentine's Day instead of going out on a date. Number one. Since Valentine's Day falls on the same day every year, Nicholas, what can we do on the same day every year? We'll clean our cases, of course. Get going, Tabak. Finding some extra time on Valentine's Day, why not rewire your entire house with some new Ethernet? Way to go, Nick. Number three. Take a good look around your house. 
You'd be surprised what you can find in the trash. Or other people's trash, for that matter. Good job, Nick. A rare IBM Model M. Perfect. Number 4 Take some time to install a new operating system on one of your old junk computers. It could save you some time in the long run. Good idea, Nick. Number 5 Valentine's Day is a perfect day to catch up on all your favorite IPTV shows. Nice hat, Nick. And don't forget to insert your Valentine's Day plans for next year into your Palm Pilot or equivalent data organizer. Well, that's all for now. Thanks, Nick, for your cooperation. See you later. You know, Steve, Valentine's Day is a stupid holiday anyway. Yeah. Made a bite. So Hallmark holiday. What is that? Stupid thing. Groundhog's Day. Yeah. I'm celebrating some Valentine's Day. Got a card for Groundhog's Day. You got it. It said, "Hope there's an early spring." Well, Uncle Ray. Anyway, one <laughs> last thing to uh, <laughs> one last thing to address, and uh, it is my laptop painting. Well, seem to have misplaced the uh, DV tape that was on because of the uh, you know two month hiatus that we've been lazing about, mm. you know, of course we've been lazing about the whole time, just sitting, sitting about. Healing legs. Anyways, in. Gotcha. Uh, I'd like to thank, you know, everybody over at Infonomicon, InRev, you know who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, one last thing, some yes. loose ends we got to tie up. Mm -hmm. You know, as a viewer to our show, it is, it's almost, uh, not, I don't want to say a responsibility, but almost like a, uh, I don't know, how would you say that? So it, it, it's the right thing to do to consider a donation. Okay, and I, mm -hmm. put that, I put that PayPal link up on our website a couple, uh, actually right when we started. Mm, yeah. yes. So far we've re received exactly $8.09 from that PayPal button. Mm -hmm. That has really done us nothing. We've also received some other uh, interesting items, which we've never addressed before on the show, but mm, we received a dollar. That was helpful. Thanks for the dollar. Buddy. That was about a quarter of a DV, DV tape. Uh, oh, picture there too. Yeah. What do we got in there? Uh, a brush. No, this no. is a piece of saran wrap. Uh, okay. What do you got in here, Will? Look at the. I like the brush. Uh, Show them the brush. I can't find it. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh an onion. onion! A red <laughs> onion. That that was. This is from uh, Hadroid. Thank you, Hadroid. Thank you for the onion. Thank you. Uh, that's greatly appreciated. I don't know what we're really gonna do with it, but I don't know what kind of onion is it. I don't know. It's a red onion. onion. Look at that. Red onion. Sweet onion, dude. Yum. Thanks, man. Uh, of course, from an anonymous viewer, the uh, mouse-shaped. What is this? <laughs> Crush or something. I've never seen this. What is this? We'll give that to Nick to clean his case or something. That must be what that's for. <laughs> it's shaped like a mouse. It's got teeth to scrape with. <laughs> it appears to be used, which is what's Ooh. worse. All right. Anyways, it's nice to, uh, it's been fun. It's been great. Uh, yeah. This is the ending of episode six. Again, we're sorry it took so long. We'll try to have something out for you. You know, within a reasonable time frame again. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. As always, if you have anything to send to us, my email is uh, will at techcentric.org. I'm Steve at techcentric.org. Nick and Jared at techcentric.org. You can find all our contact info on the website, which is www.techcentric.org. And uh, feel free to uh, share the show with your friends, parents, teachers, etc. You're a license under a Creative Commons license, so uh, you're free to distribute this to everything as long as it's not commercial, which is awesome. Because that means you can burn like 50 million copies of a show and like hand it out to people. Yeah. You could. So I wish do it. someone would do that. Why don't you? Anyways. Come on, Hadroid. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hadroid. <laughs> anyway, if you do that, let us know. If not, keep it real. We'll see you next, uh, next episode. Adios. February 14th, you're probably not going to be watching much television. Every channel's probably been filled with these ushy, gushy, lovey, love story, novel... Hi guys, welcome back to another security filled segment of mine. Will, don't do that, I can see that out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>